All right, I'm going to just go straight into it. I'm going to be going through today mostly just concepts. There's a few example questions that we're going to go through, but it's basically just getting you familiar with what vectors are and the kind of representation of vectors. How do you present them? And that's basically what it's going to be. So we shouldn't be too long today. So let me get started. The goals are what you see on the screen. We want to be able to understand the difference between vectors and scalar quantities. They're not the same. They're related, but not the same. We're going to be able to use all the proper notation to express vector concepts. And then we're going to be able to represent vector quantities using a coordinate system. But to introduce all of that, I'm going to run a little video clip for you. Hopefully, you can hear this. Hey. I'm applying for a new villain loan. Go by the name of Vector. It's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. Vector! That's me, because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. Oh, yeah! Check out my new weapon. Piranha gun! Oh, yes! Fires live piranhas. Ever seen one before? No, you haven't. I invented it. I'm doing a demonstration. Oh, ow! It's so difficult sometimes to get the blind back inside of me. Okay, so we started off on a lighter note. But some of what was just mentioned is absolutely correct. Vector is a quantity that has both of these things, a magnitude and direction. So if it only has magnitude, then it's referred to as a scalar. And just to make sure we understand the difference between a scalar and a vector, I have a couple of examples here. On the left-hand side, there are some scalar quantities. So distance is a scalar. If I just tell you that something is six kilometers away, if Kerry is six kilometers from the University of Waterloo, and I give you no indication of what direction she is from the University of Waterloo, that's a scalar quantity. And speed, and I mentioned this a few times when we were doing calculus, speed on its own, if I'm just telling you that somebody is traveling or a plane is traveling at 852 kilometers per hour, that's a scalar because I haven't mentioned what direction you're traveling in. So if it's just the actual speed, that's a scalar quantity. Mass. Now, you might think that mass and weight are related. They are related, but they're not the same because mass is a scalar. And by the way, at first, and I, I, I want to make sure this is clear. When it says Mr. Ford, I have this is no reference to the premier of the province whatsoever. Mr. Ford has a mass of 100 kilograms is a mass, is a, is a, represents mass, and that's a scalar, because it has no indication of what that mass is doing. Relate that to weight, which is related. Mr. Ford has a weight of 980 newtons downwards. So there's a force from Mr. Ford that's pushing in a particular direction, which makes weight the, 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 the vector, whereas mass is just a scalar. Velocity and speed, again, have the same kind of relationship where speed is just telling you how fast you're going. Velocity tells you how fast you're going in a particular direction. So if the velocity is 852 kilometers per hour west, that's a vector. Displacement is, again, related to distance. If I just say that she is six kilometers away, but I don't tell you what direction that's distance, but displacement is a vector quantity. Because now I'm saying that Kerry lives, yes, six kilometers away, but she is in a particular direction from the University of Waterloo. So that's kind of an example or examples of how they're different. All right. The other thing that we need to recognize is what they look like when we are representing vectors. So they're typically represented in one of two ways, with the uppercase letters, with uppercase letters that tell you the beginning and the end of the vector with an arrow on the top. So here's an example I'm pointing to it right now. The A, B, with an arrow pointing from the A to the B, is one way to represent a vector. You can either use that or you can use a lowercase letter, and it also still has the arrow on top of it. And you don't need two letters now. You're just referring it to, referring to it as vector V. Both of these still have the arrow, just so we're clear. 
When we identify it with two letters, A and B, with the arrow on top, then you're also making a distinction between the head and the tail of the vector. So the A, which is the beginning of the vector, is referred to as the tail, and the B, which is the end of the vector, is referred to as the head. All right. Some people call it the tip. You'll see that in a in a little while, as I think the University of Waterloo tends to use tip rather than 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 head. So you'll see both of those things, but they mean the same thing. The tail is the beginning, and the head is the end of the vector, as it says here. A is the beginning, and B is the end of the vector. So that's all that is. So we can also use lines to represent the vectors. We call them rays. And here is one where the tail is at A and the tip is at B. So it's going to, so I already said to you that you can use tip instead of head. So this vector is running from A to B and it's running in a particular direction. And you also see another representation here with a lowercase u with the arrow on top. So the AB vector can also be represented by the lowercase u with the arrow on top. It means the same thing. This one is the B to A vector. Notice that these two vectors, although they look the same, they're not the same because they're actually running in opposite directions. So the first one goes from A to B and has the same length, but the second one is running from B to A, so it's in the opposite direction. So whereas this one was a northeast direction going that way, this one is actually a southwest going this way. All right, so that's how those two are similar but also different. Let me continue. The magnitude of a vector, if you just are interested in knowing how long a vector is, but not what direction it's going in, so that's like the scalar part of the vector, the, the size of the vector, then you can use absolute value signs around the vector. So if the vector is V with an arrow on top, then if I put two absolute value signs around it, that means that I'm asking not for the the direction of the vector, but I'm just asking for the size of the vector. How far away, or so how, how long is the vector? That's all this means. Two vectors are equal if and only if their magnitudes and their directions are the same. So if only the magnitude is the same, or if only the direction is the same, they're not equal vectors. But they're equal vectors if both things match. So they have to have the same magnitude and the same direction. Two vectors are opposite, because you can have what are called opposite vectors. If their magnitudes are the same, but their directions are opposite, it means they're just going in exactly the opposite direction, right? So you can actually represent that by putting a minus in front of the vector. So vector A could be equal to the minus B, all right? So that means that A and B are opposite to each other, if that is the case, right? So A runs in the same sort of gen, it, it, they look as almost they're running in the same direction, but one is running, let's say, up and the other one is running down. And that's why one would be the negative of the other. And they refer to as opposite. Two vectors are parallel if their directions are the same or opposite. So you could have parallel vectors that are the same or they could also be opposite because opposite just means they have completely different directions that are sort of going, you know, almost as if one is going east and the other one is going west to refer to as being opposite. But they're still, they could still be parallel if that is the case. Now, I have a bunch of vectors here on the screen and you can see that they have the head and the tail of the vector right and the the length of the vector is also given so we know what direction they're going in and we also know what the length of the vector is so i have a couple of questions to ask about these vectors which ones are equal so look at all of the vectors on the screen and i'd like one of you to tell me any two vectors that you think are equal. Now remember, equal means they have to be the same in both direction and magnitude. So look at all of what the ones you see on the screen and see if you can tell me two of them that, or maybe more than two, that are actually equal vectors. And you have to have them the right way around in terms of the beginning and the end. So what do you think? Everybody can see the vectors on the screen, hopefully. A, B, and ML. A, B, and M, L. Absolutely. So those are equal vectors. Thank you very much. Opposite. Now remember, opposite is similar but not the same. So there are some things that are about them that are similar, but they're running in opposite directions. So give me some opposite vectors from the same set of vectors you see on the screen. Opposites this time, not equal. A, B, and E, F. Sorry, F, E. 
Ah, that's better. FE, you have to say it, and that's exactly right. You have to say FE. And the other ones that are also opposite are FE and ML, because remember that ML and AB are the same. So if these are opposite, then these also have to be opposite. Hopefully that makes sense. How about ones that are parallel? All right, so we're not asking about whether they are equal or opposite. I just want to know if they're parallel. Do you see any parallel vectors on the screen there? Give me all of them that are parallel at this point in time. Parallel, or seem to be parallel. I mean, you have no way of knowing if they're exactly parallel, but they just look like they're parallel. Come on, folks, anybody. Parallel vectors. Don't see anything that looks parallel to you? How about the ones that are equal? Wouldn't they be parallel? So the A, B, and the ML definitely must be parallel, right? But there's another one that's parallel to those two, which would be, of course, JK. JK, you know what? I'm just realizing that, yes, I missed that one. You're absolutely right. All right, you're absolutely right. It's actually parallel as well, and I missed that. So I have AB, which is this. I have ML, which is this. And I have FE, which is this, but I did not put in JK. And that's, and that's an excellent observation. So I stand corrected. All right, this is missing one of the parallel ones. So those four vectors are actually parallel. Good call. How about equal magnitude? Look at the vectors again. And let's see if you can tell me which ones are of equal magnitude. Just give me a set that you think are all equal in magnitude. So we're not talking about direction. We're just talking magnitude now. A, B, mm -hmm. F, E, yeah. C, B. And yeah. ML. Well done. All right, they're all there. But there's another set that are also equal in magnitude. And I'll just put them on. JK and GH. So the JK and the GH, they're equal in magnitude. They don't seem like they're running in the same direction, and they're not. But magnitude refers to the length of the vector. So this is the same length as that. And that's why they're equal in magnitude. OK, moving along. Geometric vectors and algebraic vectors. Now, geometric vectors is what we've been kind of looking at all along. They're vectors which are referenced without using a coordinate system. So um, all the lines that we've been using just now, which you didn't have any coordinates at all, you weren't trying to put them in a grid on a Cartesian plane, those are geometric vectors. But we're going to be looking at something called algebraic vectors as well. And these are the ones that are referenced within a coordinate system. So. If, for instance, I tell you that the vector's tail is at 3, 5, and the head is at 5, 1, then that would be an algebraic vector, right? Because I have to use these things that are representing points at the beginning and the end to tell you where the vector is and what direction it's going in. It's still referred to as the AB vector, right? Because I give you an A and I give you a B. And the magnitude would be still be the, you know, the absolute value lines around it. And in this case, the magnitude would be the root of 20 or 2 root 5. And how do I know that? That's because I'm just using the distance formula, which I have on the screen here. You'll notice that I just simply took the difference between the x's, squared it, the difference between the y's, squared it, added them together, which should be the square root of 4 plus 16 or the square root of 20. And that's why this represents the magnitude of this algebraic vector. It's algebraic because I'm referencing them within a coordinate system. I'm giving you the A and the B as coordinates in a Cartesian plane. So we call them algebraic vectors. A little note here, which I just want to make sure I emphasize that the magnitude of a vector is never negative because it's a size. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a distance. So we never talk about the magnitude of a vector being negative. You can see negative signs on vectors, but it's never to reference the magnitude. Magnitude, and that's why we have absolute value to represent the magnitude. It's always a positive number. So just be careful about that. OK, directional bearings. This is going to come up a lot when we're dealing with vectors. A lot of where vectors are applicable in the real world have to do with bearings. Pilots who are navigating, ships who are navigating, they use a lot of directional bearings. And vectors are very useful in determining the result of two forces that are operating against each other. So in vector mathematics, we frequently have to refer to bearings. And there are two widely 
used or popular ways of doing it. One of them is to refer to a bearing as being, as it says here, for instance, S61W, which means 61 degrees west of south. I have an example here that I just pulled from the internet. This is showing a bearing of 34 degrees east of south. So if south is the north south, and by the way, I always put the north south part first. So the north south line is here. And if I'm 34 degrees to the east of that, and I can write that as south 34 east or 34 degrees east of south. So I'm on the eastern side of south 34 degrees away. So that's one way that I can write this. By the way, this south 61 west is not what I'm trying to show here. I just pull this off the internet and these are the numbers that were on this particular bearing, but it's the same system. So this is south 34 east because I'm 34 degrees on the eastern side of south. And that's why that's the way that we describe it. The other way that we can describe it is this. Instead of using the north-south line, we just use north as zero. And then we rotate in a counterclockwise, sorry, in a clockwise direction. So for instance, if I said, uh, okay, I have two different numbers here again. This says 142 from north would be starting from here and going this way and then ending up at 142. I'm showing you 241 again from north. So if you remember that a half rotation is 180, that means I'm going another 180 plus, I guess, what's that, 61 degrees into this quadrant here. So this would be actually equivalent of uh, south uh, 61 degrees west, because I'm 61 degrees away from west. But the one that the example that I give you up here is 142 degrees, which is the same as south 38 east. So if I had a picture which was showing you the direction going somewhere in this quadrant over here, then it would be 142 degrees from north going in a clockwise direction. So that's just two ways, two very popular ways of information about bearing. But one uses, let me just go back and show you again. One uses this north-south line and the other one just uses north and then going clockwise from north. So both you'll see in questions going forward. Okay, another question or question to consider. We'll call this example one. Here's a rhombus, and you know rhombus is basically a square that is doesn't have equal angles or doesn't have 90 degree angles. So here's a rhombus, so all the sides are the same, and we put labels on them, we call it A, B, C, D. It has two diagonals in there, A, C, and B, D. So A to C, and every one of these is a, a vector line. So it's not just a line, but it has a line with an arrow on one end, on the head of the vector. So you'll see AC, for instance, or AE as vectors, or I wanted to see them that way. No, the diagonals are at AC from here to here and BD from here to here. So those are the diagonals. Name vectors that are equal to each of the following. So here is AB. AB runs from here to here. You can see the arrow starting at A, ending at B, running in this direction. So I'm asking for a vector that's equal to that. I'm looking around for another vector that has the same length and running in the same direction. So I'm going from A to B. Then it must mean that the only other vector in this diagram that is running from A to B is the one that's going from D to C. That would be the equal vector. So AB would be equal to DC. Those are two equal vectors. DA, so that's this vector running from D to A. Right. Similarly, that vector will be the same thing as the CB from C to B because they're running in the same direction, have the same length. Don't, don't forget that a rhombus has all sides the same. So every side on this uh, outside here is the same length. So those are equal. EB, well, EB runs from here to here, right? From here, from the center up to B. That's what EB is. So which other vector, I'm going to throw this one out to the room now. Which other vector do you think would be the same? as EB. D. There you go. All right. So they're actually running like, you know, almost tail to tail. So, so sorry, head to tail. So this one at the head of this vector runs into the tail of the other one and goes up. But you're absolutely right. And then the last one is AE. So AE runs from here to here. So again, you know, without having to ask anybody, I think we can all conclude that's the same thing as EC. So that's the other vector that's the same. OK, second example. Very simple example, I think. Draw a vector to represent the displacement of a box 
So there's a box that's being displaced, which is a vector quantity. All right, you remember, as you move something in a particular direction with a particular distance, that would be a vector quantity. So draw a vector to represent a displacement of a box, which is moved 12 meters up a ramp. So there's the direction and inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. So here's my horizontal line. Here's my vector. Here's my 12 meters to represent the distance. And here's the 30 degree angle that we're talking about. And I'm going to put on the two ends of that, the A and the B, right? Because I want to give this vector, uh, uh, you know, a head and a tail. And then I'm going to represent it as an AB vector. So there's your vector. There's a nice simple vector, right? 30 degrees inclined to the ground, 12 meters running up this ramp. And there you go. Third example. So this is a rectangle. This one came from the University of Waterloo website. So you can go and review how they did it when at, 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 at some point. MNOP. So M-N-O-P. That's your rectangle. And they give us side lengths of three and five. So the shorter side, I guess you could call that the, the, the width is three and the length is five. So what I've done is they said that Q is the midpoint of MP. So because it's the midpoint, I split up that into two 2.5 meter lengths. All right. So I've put in the NP line and the NO line. So again, N to P, it's important to watch the direction. I'm going from N to P and from N to O. And I'm trying to find the angle between the two vectors. Now, this is a very simple trig exercise. But I must warn you, this is going to come up in one of the questions, that when you're asked for the angle between two vectors, those vectors have to be tail to tail. Well, these are tail to tail. This vector NP has its tail here at N. This vector NO has its tail, tail here at N. So the angle between them is just simply what angle you would get from going from here to here. And that's just simply using tan. The tan of theta, we call this theta, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, 3 over 5. So the angle is just simply approximately 31 degrees. So nothing particularly changing there at all. NM and NQ. So let me get rid of these two lines. Let's put in the NM line. So there's my NM running from N to M. And my NQ is a line that goes from N to the midpoint here, Q. So there is the line that I'm talking about, N to Q. I know I'm asking again, and again, they're both tail to tail. It goes from N to M and from N to Q. So because they're tail to tail, I'm really asking for the angle in between these two right here. Well, that's again simple. That's just the tan of the angle is 2.5 over 3, approximately 40 degrees. Now, those two were relatively simple. I'm going to go to the third one, which is NQ and QP. For that, I'm going to go to a brand new slide. So we're now considering NQ and QP. So NQ is this line that goes from here to here. That's hopefully pretty clear. QP runs from here to here. Now, what angle am I talking about? That's the question. Where's the angle that I'm trying to find? Now, if you thought the angle I was trying to find was this angle up here, that would not be right. Why not? Something I've been saying all along. Why is it that this angle up here is not the angle that I'm trying to find? That would be wrong. What's wrong with that interpretation of the question? Because, because they're not tail and tail? Correct. So how am I going to fix that? How am I going to fix that? That's the question. I need them to be tail to tail to know the angle between them. I still am asking the question, the angle between NQ and QP. Well, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to create another vector that's equal to QP, right? Here's QP right here. That's clearly the vector that they ask us to find the angle between. But that vector is the vector down here. Why are they equal? Because the distance from N to this point is the same as the distance from Q to that point. So this vector is the same as this vector. And remember, if they're equal vectors, then it means that they can be treated as if they were exactly the same. So I'm just using this vector to represent the QP vector. But the, the reason I'm using this one is because I can put these two tail to tail. So let's put a little diagram on the side here for you to see exactly what I've done. Here's my NQ vector. Here's my QP vector. 
Okay. So now, as you just heard, I think it was Afraz who said, I'm not, I can't remember who it was. This angle right here is the one I'm trying to find. So I have two ways of doing this. One way is to figure out what the length of NQ is, and that would be using Pythagoras' theorem, you know, three squared. In other words, it's this line right here, right? I could use Pythagoras. This is 2.5, that's three. And I could just use Pythagoras' theorem. And then I could use cosine after that to find this angle because the cosine of this is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. It works out to be 50 degrees. But the truth is, some of you probably recognize that I could just drop a line from here to here, which is the same as the three here that I had all along. right? And if that line is three, then I can just use tan again. Oh, I, again, I put that in the wrong order. And the tan of theta, the tan of the angle I'm trying to find, is equal to the opposite side, which is three over that 2.5 here, and that works out to be 50 degrees. So both answers are obviously the same because it's the same angle. But I just wanted to make sure we understood that anytime you have a vector question to answer about the angle between two vectors, you make sure that those two angles, those two vectors, sorry, are tail to tail. Because if they're not, you're going to have to find an equivalent vector that will make them become tail to tail. And that's what I did here. I essentially took a line that went from n to the center of this side and call that the equivalent of the QP vector. I know they're tail to tail, and then I can go ahead and I can calculate the answer, and it works out to be the 50 degree angle. So folks, in what is that, about half an hour, we've done what we had to do for today. I did say that it wasn't going to be a, a long class, and there are your success criteria. And uh, that's about it. I haven't yet, let me just stop sharing here. I haven't yet put the outline for, well, there's an outline from the previous year, but I'd like to sort of, um, you know, tweak that a little bit for, 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 for this year because there won't be a problem set or anything like that. As, as you know, we've kind of scaled things back and we're only looking at the, the, the basic concepts for each of these units. So let me go back and look at the, the outline again. So don't download it yet. But I would like you to try the homework. Once I've done that, I say that I should have that one that's tweaked by about the, by, by, by later on this afternoon, later on this evening, I should have it tweaked. So please make sure that you try those homework questions. All right, is there any of what we just did that anybody wants to ask? What is this text message here? No, oh, oh, somebody, okay, Owen was chiming in. I don't usually have the text thing up. Thank you very much, Owen, for that answer. I don't usually have the text thing up when I'm going through the question. So that's why I didn't see your answer, but thank you very much for that. All right, so unless there are any questions, I am going to leave it there. Thank you very much for turning out. And we'll have our next class as usual on Friday. Monday's a holiday, but on Friday we'll have our next class. Okay, folks, thanks for showing up. Take care. Bye.